Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, back with another Flames of War painting tutorial. However, instead of tackling the World War II game, I will instead be focusing on a model from the Cold War Gone Hot game of Team Yankee, and I'll be showing you how to paint a British M109 self-propelled gun in a desert scheme, and I'll be making use of the Vallejo range of paints to do so. Before we start painting, we first of all need to apply a primer to make sure that the any later layers of paint adhere to the miniature surface properly. For this first step, I've chosen to use a white primer as this will help with applying the lighter color desert scheme of this model. However, feel free to use whatever color you prefer here. With our primer completed, we can start to apply the base colors, but before we apply any paint, I would recommend thinning them down first. This can be achieved by mixing water in with your paint, making sure that you have roughly equal parts water to paint and a consistency similar to what you see here. Now, once this paint has been sufficiently thinned, you can begin to apply it over the surface of the tank. In this case, I'll be using buff. Apply your first layer with a large brush and then allow it to dry before applying that watered down mixture once again. By repeating this step uh, as many times as you need to get a good smooth starting color, you shouldn't need to worry about obscuring any details or creating brush marks because you haven't used a thick paint. To pick out the details of the tank surface quickly and easily, we'll be next applying a dry brush of pale sand. Now dry brushing works by loading up a fairly large brush with some paint before wiping it onto a tissue or a piece of paper to remove some of that excess paint. We only want a small amount of paint to remain in the bristles for the step. With your dry brush ready, lightly drag it across the whole miniature. You will notice that paint will start to accumulate onto the hard edges and details, leaving only a thin line of the lighter tan of pale sand. As you can see, this is a very quick and easy step to perform in order to boost that level of detail. Now that the main hull color has been achieved, we can next move on to applying some color to those smaller details. The first of these are the metal track links and also the wooden handles. And for this, I'll be using flat brown. This brown color will give the tracks a slightly dirty and dusty and also slightly rusted appearance that we can then build upon with some washes later on. Across the tank, there will be several areas of dark metal and rubber, and these include some of the secondary weapons, tow cable, stowage items, rubber track pads, and the rubber trim of the road wheels. Now, for all of these areas, we're going to be applying a base coat of black gray and thinning it in the same way as we did before. Now, this dark gray color will allow us to benefit from a black wash later on because there will be a transition between the darker wash and the slightly lighter black gray. Now, that's something that using a pure black here wouldn't allow us to do. You can also use this paint to apply some damage to the paintwork, which is especially useful for a lighter scheme like this. So start off by taking a small piece of sponge, dipping it into the black gray, and then removing the excess onto a piece of paper until only a smaller amount of paint remains, much like we did with our dry brushing earlier. You can then lightly apply this over the hull in a dabbing motion, which will leave behind small flecks of the darker paint, creating the appearance that the main paint color has been chipped away, leaving the darker bare metal beneath. I should note as well that once your base coats are completed, this is the best time to apply any decals. This allows any later weathering created by washes or dry brushing to be applied over those markings as well. With all the base coats completed, we can now begin to apply some washes. These are fantastic for boosting the visibility of details by creating a difference between the lighter and darker areas of shadow that are created by the wash. Now the first wash we'll be applying in this way is sepia wash, but straight out of the pot, it'll be a little too strong, especially for a lighter scheme such as this. So we need to water it down a little. Mix water into your wash until you have a consistency similar to what you see here. Now that your wash is thinned, you want to apply it in a much more localized and targeted way compared to other tank guides that I've produced. Using a fairly small brush, I will be directly applying the sepia wash into and around some of the details on the hull. Once dried, you'll find that those small details will stand out much more than they did before, and the tank will have a slightly dirtier appearance as well. The final step, and also the final wash, is black wash, and we'll be thinning this out in much the same way as we have done before. Now this time we'll be applying it as an all over wash, so we're not just targeting into those details, and we're gonna be focusing on any areas that we painted with brown or black gray earlier on. 
And here we have the completed M109. Now, whilst I focus on just one specific tank, in this video, you could easily apply the same colors and techniques to other British vehicles in desert schemes as well. Now, for this tutorial, I took a lot of inspiration from the Colors of War book released to accompany Flames of War. It provides in-depth painting guides that covers an extensive range of World War II and Cold War era infantry and vehicles from multiple nations, eras, and theatres. It's definitely worth checking out and is a great reference point for modern history wargamers. And you can find a full list of all the paints that I've used in this tutorial in the description below, along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my latest videos. And so the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.